Okay, hello, welcome back to Margin Bean Counter. Um, today I'm going to be looking at Project Gutenberg, which is a public domain site for um, printed work, which is in the public domain basically. Um, this is the top page you can see here over 60,000 free ebooks. Um, this is literally manuscripts for all of them. Um, I came across it when I was looking on Discovery, which is basically just a uh, a guide to what to do with public domain books. Um, it should have been quite helpful and point reduction of not just Gutenberg, but a few other websites. We'll go through that another time. Um, at the moment, I want to go through uh, Project Gutenberg. So I can remember hearing about this a few years ago um, and it seemed like a good idea to take books which have disappeared from the bookshelves of bookstores and um, see what you can do with it. Um, it's quite simple, basically you select the title. Uh, there are many, many ways to do this. It's quite a, an old fashioned website. This looks like it hasn't been updated really since 2010. It's still got that old fashioned PayPal button on it. Um, but then that's, it's quite useful. I mean, it, it's obviously the, the, it's a, like a charity website so trying to keep um, old works of art um, still out there so, so people can use it. Um, the way I've been using this website so far is just search and browse. So basically come in here, you've got a choice between a quick search or an advanced search. Um, if you know exactly what you're looking for or if you're just browsing, you can just go through this um, great big list of languages, um, authors and titles. And it's, since you've got 6,000 books on here, if you're just going to browse, you're going to come up with all sorts of different things. Uh, one of the books I found before was this book by Lisbeth Longfrock. Uh, it's part of something called the Once Upon a Time series. Um, and what they've done is you've got different file formats. This is the HTML version, um, which just gives you a chance to kind of look through it and see what the original book was like and what you want to do with it. Now, because it's public domain, you can do literally anything you want with it. Anything from um, converting it to a script narrative if you want to if you want to um enter the film industry tv industry however you want to do it um there's a whole plethora of, of stories here that are already serialized to some extent um allowing you to shortcut a lot of um legal battles that would take place with modern books uh where you're talking to a living author um and you're doing honor to the person who wrote this originally um to create their uh work uh, brand new uh this is basically how it's done. It's the original book as it would have been published, but it's just all thrown together like that. So if I go back from here, this is how it comes when you see the page for this one book. It has links, QR codes as you need to. Um, gives you a breakdown of the author, the illustrator, because obviously there's illustrations in there that would come into public domain as well, since they go through the same time period. Uh, since this was uh, a, not an English language book, you've got the um, translator's name on there uh, and when she uh, is believed to live from. Um, oh, Hans Aldrin was the author. Silly me. Elizabeth Longfrock is the name of the book. That's me. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> it also gives you the amount of downloads there are um, in the last 30 days. This one's been quite popular. Um, and it's basically it. you've got Kindle versions of this, you've got every other version, um, and it's how you use it uh, going forward. And one of my suggestions is if you're a good artist and you're good at making um, book covers, you can just go to somewhere like this, Book Printing UK. Um, if you're in UK, or I imagine there's like a thousand one other um, book publishing companies that will produce books for you. Now, I imagine the prices can be quite expensive, depending on how you're doing it, but if you're just starting off, Payback's always a good place to start from. Or if you want to get in on premium stuff, um, if you've gone to any major um, book company recently, you'll see that there are very old uh, public domain books which have uh, been collected in the special book covers, um, which people are just grabbing as collector's items, essentially. That's really what you're going to be doing with this. Um, and as you can find somewhere in this deep, deep library of um, knowledge and, and artistic work and written work, um, if you can find a gem in there, you're going to be able to use that, but use it as you want to. I, I would recommend it. The link's going to be in the description below. 
Um, I, I can honestly say this is um, a good fun way to, to practice your artistic talents um, and use public domain stuff at the same time. Just remember this this is somebody's artistic work so don't abuse it more than you need to especially if you're going to um, non-major languages um, like English, Spanish, any of the, the Chinese languages. If you're going into to something like Maori or um, Navajo or something like that then those those books are going to be rarer than, than they would be for the rest of them and their um, intellectual credibility is um, precious basically so don't abuse this this more than you need to but by all means go in here and um, take these books and make good use of them okay yep i think that's it for this week um what we're gonna go with next week who knows i will speak to you all then okay take care bye bye